Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you what I'm calling the short moth fly. The water is low and clear here in western Pennsylvania and it's getting a little warm out and we have to adapt. So I'll talk more about the adaptation as we tie the fly. We're going to do this on a TMC size 12, 24, 57. I'm going to add a black bead for a head and a little weight and it is going to be tied from one of the strands from those mops that uh, you're all familiar with by now, I'm sure. I'm going to use some hair's mask for both dubbing and some leggy stuff at the front. And we're going to um, hold it all together with black uni thread size 8 aught. So one of the key features is to burn the tail end of the mop. So we'll talk a little more about that. The other is I'm calling this short. So there's a full length um, strand from the mop. I've shortened it back to about halfway and left the core fibers exposed. And I was going to try and demonstrate on camera here the uh, technique to burn. So I've got the, the long stemmed lighter and I'm coming in with tweezers and at different angles. And I'm trying to achieve that black um, tapered tip that a lot of uh, a lot of bait and bugs have. So as I pull it off camera, I'm kind of blowing out the flame. Sometimes it catches for a second, but but there you have it. That's that's kind of ideal. That's what I'm after. And let's get started. So I've got the hook in the vise. The bead is on the hook. We'll start the thread, make a little bump there, and work our way back. And we'll trim off the excess. And this stuff's all routine, so I'm going to break away and talk about fishing this fly and why we have it in the first place. So uh, not long ago, I went down to the local stream. It's a put-and-take fishery. The water's about halfway down, about as low as it can get. Um, late summer low, I guess. Very clear. And still there were a good number of trout in there. And early in the morning, while the water's still cold, um, I guess it's okay to fish for them, and if you want to eat them, then that's a good time to put a few in the creel. So they, they may pass away anyways once the water gets even warmer. So I did, uh, back to the fly, I did kind of wrap back to the barb of the hook. I don't want to go too far, and I don't want to tie in too close to that, uh, the remaining mop, because I want that little bit of wiggle in there. And, and part of what I'm doing here. And the goal of this fly is also to make a thinner body in front of where the mop's tied in. We want to leave as much of that hook um, exposed as possible, the hook gap, so that we don't miss fish. And, and there, that's part of the reason. So I kind of worked my way around to telling you that uh, I took my standard mop flies down there. I tried everything else. And early in the morning, those fish are looking for a chunk of something they can eat. So... Uh, when they drop in, a couple of fish ran up, grabbed the mop immediately, and I missed a few. And I think what they're doing is grabbing the tail. They focus on the mop and not so much the front end. And so um, I, I decided to go back to the drawing board, came home and kind of made some short ones, and then went back at it. And um, so here we just stole a little of that uh, dubbing from the hair's mask, some of the darker stuff. I wanted to, a little bit of contrast here. I'm going to use a dubbing dubbing loop per se, but I, I just make a, a dubbing noodle and fold it in half over itself. And then I have my shepherd's hook in the bottom. And we're going to spin that up and uh, not too tight. We want to make it kind of leggy and, and buggy, picky, I think is one of the terms you'll hear used. And we just want a nice kind of not too chunky, but not too skinny um, body there in front of the mop. So a couple of wraps and we'll tie that off. And then I'm going to do this in two parts. You'll see again, we'll trim off this excess and then add another loop. And we'll need too much here. We're just trying that this next uh, pinch of uh, fur from the uh, hair's mask, I'm shooting for... I want more of the uh, guard hairs, and I want this to be a little longer. So it kind of creates the illusion of bulk there, but still leaves the, uh, a lot of the hook available and the hook gap available. So I've spread out a thin chunk off that hair's mask, and 
I'll fiddle with it a little bit till we get what we want here. The hooks in, and I can adjust this. And um, one thing I know, we'll center it a little bit, get the uh, guard hairs to be a little longer. But then I have that little pinch of guard hair in the top, and that bothers me. So I'm going to take some of that out. And then it's just a matter of spinning it up enough to hold it and we'll get a couple of wraps of that in front almost like a uh, soft hackle style and um, again to create a little movement to give it a leggy effect and to uh, <clears throat> create the uh, the illusion of more bulk there so on the second go around I went back to that same um, same creek those stock trout there were a good number of them that uh, escaped the blue heron and were still there and I didn't bring any home. I know that at this time of year, maybe it's it's more humane to bring a few home and eat them. But um, I caught a few of them and then and let them go. And hopefully there'll be a few more or a few of them left next month and we'll try it again. Um, still going month to month and trying to catch a couple of trout in each month of the year. And for June, July and August get pretty tough, but we'll see what happens. The other thing is um, we there was some talk of taking the kids to the lake and catching panfish and uh, we have the same issue the uh, the little panfish or bluegills they'll suck in the tail of these these flies and never actually um, taste the hook and a lot of them get to spit that out right away and they get away so the uh, shorter fly is more effective there and uh, we'll be doing that and getting some kids out on the down to the pond and have them teach them to cast and catch fish and manage fly line and all that and uh, Hopefully we do more of that and that happens very soon too. So here we're just whip finishing and a little super glue on the thread. And you can see where you could crank these out in large numbers. Fish, you know, fish with them. And if you get a few caught in the trees or the fish run away with them, it's not a big deal. And uh, so it's basically just a short mop fly. A couple of enhancements I talked about. There it is compared to the long one. And um, I think the uh, short fly obviously it pulled, it proved more effective in that low clear water. I'm not sure about the rest of the year, but uh, hopefully you put a few in your box, catch some fish, teach some kids how to fish. And this uh, hopefully this is doing you guys some good. So I'll keep it up. If you want to learn more about me, uh, look me up on Amazon. And until next time, be safe.